here from UIC Jason Kuji. Um, today we are going to teach you guys how to build. All right. So uh, today, guys, we are going to build the IGLW. Um, let me show you a little bit uh, about the IGLW. The IGLW is a uh, three post. Um, you'll see that there's holes in the the post, and that's where we are going to put the wires to as we start building. Um, this is your cap. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put it on the uh, the hammer. This is our mechanical mod. Um, this is actually available for pre-order right now. Um, you could check out our website, lazygates.com, um, for the pre-orders. But enough of that. We are now going to start building the uh, IGLW. So to start off, um, we're going to need to open up those holes. We're going to unscrew these right here. If you zoom in real quick, you'll see that these holes open up. build what you're gonna need to do is uh, you're gonna have to grab yourself some silica and some eco wool um, today we're gonna be using the uh, silica um, eco wool is a just a different type of um, working material um, these come in a three mil a two mil and I believe a one mil there's no need to spray on it um, eco uh, silica comes in uh, one two and three mil but today we are going to hack this out and we are going to use silica. Um, you're also going to need some uh, Cantel wire, um, 28 gauge. Uh, they come in different gauges as well, um, 26, 28, uh, 30, and 32. Um, the lower the number, the thicker your wire is. Um, 28 is usually a good, it'll give you a, a pretty good resistance um, throughout the at the end of the build. Um, this is we're gonna need about I'm gonna take some of this off. This is I tend to use a little more than uh, a foot. I like working with more wire than uh, usual because it's always better to have more wire than too little and end up short. So now, um, what I'm going to do with this is we're going to be building a dual coil. Um, we're going to start off by folding the uh, silica. So I like to fold it twice. So essentially, you're wrapping around um, four loops. I mean, four four widths, four strands of width, and you're going to have uh, two loops right there. Um, keep in mind that the more loops you do, um, the more strands you'll end up um, having uh, squeezed together, the uh, higher your resistance is going to be. I'm just going to press that right there. Now we're going to grab our 28 gauge wire. Um, so with wire, the thicker the wire, the less resistance you'll have. You don't want to go too low in resistance because um, the lower the resistance, the hotter the coil gets. And it's just, if your battery's not able to handle the resistance on it, um, it could heat up and uh, cause some problems. So, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and wrap our, our uh, wick. So, this is our wick. I usually start up top. trying to choke the wick. I'm just kind of letting it kind of, I guess you could say, um, I just wanted to make contact with the wick, but not, you know, 
check it to where uh, he won't be able to flow through. So this is going to be your first foil. Um, the more wraps you do on the foil, uh, the higher your resistance is going to be. With mechanicals, you want to stay at a lower resistance because um, you're firing the voltage off of the battery. So uh, to compensate for the lower voltage on the, the battery, uh, you want to do uh, less less resistance. You want to go with the less uh, lower resistance there. So that's going to be. I'm going to do a three wrap. So this is a three wrap. So you have three on one side and then three on the bottom side. And now I'm going to cut a little bit of this off. And what I like to do is. Um, the top wire I use as my positive, and the bottom wire I use as my negative. On my IZW, um, you have one positive and two negative posts. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip the top wire onto the, uh, the positive and the bottom wire on the negative. So negative goes on the negative, positive goes on the base there because we're going to be flipping our other uh, wire through and I kind of want to be able to see it going through the other other side. Okay, so I'm going to cut through, leave a little bit of it there. We're going to do the same thing. wrapping you kind of want to have um, the spacing as mirrored as possible to your other foil um, having it too close or having it too wide changes the uh, resistance of the, the build um, it, it, the way you, you the way you could think about it would be um, the less wire you use at the end of the build give you a lower resistance so more wraps equals higher resistance um, less wraps obviously lower resistance um, and yeah that's that's about it the closer they are um, the lower your resistance gets the farther apart they are the higher your resistance gets all right so again on the other side uh, top wire is positive bottom wire Safety tip number one. <laughs> Make sure you lock your mechanical. Alright, so... Positive on the top on the positive. And the negative. And the zoom in, I go under the coil. should see the other wire peek through there. Okay, so as you can see, um, my bottom leads are under the, uh, the leads are under this coil, and then my leads are on this one. So that way it's just a, in my opinion, it's just a lot easier to work that way. Now we're gonna grab some tweezers we're going to grab these wires, pull them through, pull through, pull in push, and pull in the leads, and push them at the same time. Thing. 
try to get this further, closer we come to the coast, the farther away they are from the coast, the higher resistance gets as well. So you want to make sure that you pull it in. Okay, so let's go. All right, so once that's done, let's go ahead and like to push or pinch and pull it down. Now you don't want to um, screw this down all the way through because you'll end up cutting the wire. So once you feel a little pressure, you can go ahead and stop. Just make sure you squeeze all the way. pull up and out that way helps lock it in and you want to stay away from the base because uh, if these wires are touching the base you'll see um, like a little it, it'll start heating up this coil or this wire here so up and out away from the coil and the base and that should look good up and out start playing you want to just pulse it first um, make sure because you don't want to end up um, having these just to make sure that you don't have any of these uh, leads touching the base and you just press give it a quick pulse and uh, now we just want to make sure that that's all lighting up and if it's all not lighting up all you want to do is what I tend to do is I straighten this out If you have one side hotter than the other, it's only because that actual um, coil is closer to the post than it is with the uh, to the other end. So if that's a little hotter, just straighten pull this back a little bit. All right. And then um, with coils, with the with the dual coil build, uh, you want to try to mirror them as much as you can. So whatever you do on one side, you want to make sure you do on the other side as well. All right, so now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to test fire this. Um, when you test fire, you want to pulse it first just to make sure you don't have any um, shorts or hot spots or anything. All right, so pulse. Make sure everything's lighting up. Um, so what you want to start looking out for would be um, coils that aren't firing. So for example, um, this side is firing a little hotter, or this side is firing a little hotter than this side is. Um, pulling back on the actual coil will even out the uh, resistance on this. That way you get an even, even flow. Right, so now you just want to make sure that the spacing is uh, identical on the other side. Just make sure they're spaced out evenly. doesn't make enough contact to this screw. Now what we're going to do is
supposed to settle or recover from each of these main clippers. I just like to use these because they're a lot easier to get under the coil with. So I'll cut that one. go around and cut under the coil like this like that around and under this coil so that way we have a little bit of filler to well as well that you have huge flow through the coil. saturate everything before you start vaping it so once your wick starts to kind of look all clear and jelly looking then you should be good start spreading white that's when you know you're gonna need to re-grip that just means your wick is getting wet The bigger you go on the air holes, the more vapor you'll end up producing um, because you're getting more airflow inside the, uh, you're aerating the coil a lot more that way. Um, so what we're going to do real quick is we're going to drill this out and then uh, come back. Okay, so I, go, uh, I went ahead and drilled out the uh, air hole on this. This is a um, 330, no, 764 air hole. Um, like I said, the airier you are, you're able to get on your draw, the more vapor you'll be able to produce. Um, so, yeah. Um, every time you pull out this cap, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, line it or have it face the, uh, the coil. So that way you're aerating the coil as much as possible. So then you don't get this uh, spot right there. So now you're going to 
hate it. a knife um, this build you could get like a good um, some folks even get a drop of it and um, yeah that's about it all right guys so um, that was the tutorial on how to build the uh, three post Igo W um, if you like this video if you have any questions like comment subscribe and uh, till next time rock and Mercy Jace for the base